Buff Nation, what is going on? I hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, today, we have a great show for you guys. Um, and I think it's one that we're all really anticipating and one that I've wanted to have for a re really long time now. He will be on in just a minute. Uh, so y'all get in here, hit the likes, let us know um, who's watching in the comments, what your thoughts are. Um, but as an introduction, you might know him as former defensive lineman for our Colorado Buffaloes and 2004 Houston Bowl champion. He's a six-year NFL vet who played for the Rams, the Jets, the Dolphins, our Denver Broncos playing both sides of the ball. He's the host of the Zero to 60 podcast and a regular on the, uh, on the Coach JB show. Links in the description. He's the owner and head coach of Zero, uh, Six Zero Academy and six zero equipment will he reach through the screen and turn me into one of his six zero body bags available for purchase on a six zero equipment.com website links in the description coaches we'll find out but in the words of brandon mccartney let's give a wonderful wired fired and inspired welcome to coach matt mcchesney Seven, how's it going coach good man Glad to be on the show. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Well, thanks again for taking the time to chat with me. Um, you know, this isn't how I, I drew up exactly getting you on the show. Um, but man, I, I, I got to tell you, I, uh, I got to give you props because um, I did not feel I had never felt the wrath before of the dungeon family army <laughs> on twitter after my tweets on monday and uh man i i i had some flashbacks to the stanford loss on monday night and uh i you know i appreciate you reaching out i appreciate um you know giving us a chance to talk and also in front of the audience giving everybody uh, a, a chance to hear from your perspective. So um, let, let's go ahead and, and get right started, I guess, with the tweets and, and everything like that. I had seen that you had gone on Jason Whitlock's show. Yep. And I got to admit, like, I'm a big fan of yours, Matt. I don't like Jason Whitlock. I don't like Jason Whitlock. And when I saw that, man, I, as a fan, I was like, nah, man, because sometimes we feel like, are you socializing with the with the number one opposition with Jason Whitlock? But um, I wanted to hear from your perspective. Why did you choose to accept his invite, and why was it so important for you to get out there and and say what you said? I mean, that was a long conversation that you had with him. Well, yeah, I, I mean, look, man. Uh, <laughs> I, I think this is a pretty easy question to answer. I get paid to do media, so like. When somebody in the national media wants to talk about Colorado and everybody says, I don't like Jason Whitlock, I don't want to talk to him, then you don't ever get to hear anybody in Colorado's perspective. You just hear Jason fucking Whitlock. So I will talk to anybody, as you know, and I don't, I don't read comments often. Somebody sent me a screenshot of your stuff. That's why I found it. Um, I could really give a, a Tiffany fuck what anybody thinks, honestly, because, again, this is my profession. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. like everybody I talk to. Dan Rather used to interview fucking terrorists in caves and shit. He didn't like them, but he still went and talked to them. I'm not really a fan of Jason Whitlock. I can't say I've ever really watched any of his stuff. I know he's pretty hardcore on Coach Sanders, and he, he doesn't really like a lot of the things yeah. that he would call gimmicks. And... I think it's important to have a voice that can challenge that without just saying, oh, you piece of shit, you went on Whitlock. Like, I think it's the most played out, idiotic mindset in the world. It, it's why it's a dichotomy of our country, sports, everything else. It's all the people standing there yelling at each other rather than just having a conversation. So I don't have to like a motherfucker to talk to him, um, point in case. And, uh, <laughs> and, and look, man, I, I, I think that, uh, all the fanboys and people that want to like come at me, I I'm just like prime baby. I'm not hard to find. I'm real, real easy to find. So, um, I think everybody knows where my heart is. Um, 
Like I, I run six zero equipment too. I sold body bags to Nebraska. I, am, am I a bad guy for that? I've sent like fifteen players to them in fifteen years. And should I tell the kids not to go there? Like I, I think that I think that people are fucking ridiculous. Like I'm forty two years old. I've been out of the league for twelve years and about thirteen years or whatever. And I run a business where I associate with everybody. And coaches change jobs like crazy. And mm-hmm. the one consistent in Boulder since I started Six Zero has been me with every coach trying to help. So if you're just a fan of Coach Prime, you probably took offense to that. But if you're a Colorado Buffalo fan, um, then I, I mean, and you're you're like angry at me, then you must not know shit about me. So I don't really like uh, if I don't know who else doesn't like Coach Prime because everybody sits here and has has charts about who doesn't like who. Give <laughs> somebody else who doesn't like him. I guess we could talk about Danny Cannell if you want. To. All right, Danny Cannell. Yeah, I think Danny Cannell's takes are ridiculous. But if Danny Cannell was like, yo, you want to come on my show and talk about Coach Prime? I'd probably go on his show and talk about Coach Prime. He played in yeah. the league. He knows a lot more than the average fan. And Pete, look, when all, when professionals, professionals in this business talk about this business and pundits and like, you know, just regular peeps want to talk at the same level, I'm with that shit. I'm all exposing, I'm all about exposing Hobby Town. So let's do it, dog. Like, Let's expose some hobby town shit. You want to know why I talked to Jason Whitlock? Because none of you pussies would. It was well said. It was well said. And um, <laughs> what, one thing that I'm wondering, um, Matt, and guys, if if you have anything about to uh, to say about this, go and watch. Go and watch the interview. Because yeah, that would be smart. Yeah. Because a lot of stuff that Matt has talked about in regards to the program is a lot of the stuff that was, you know, having me pick up the Newports this season that we've talked about on this channel. Um, a, a, a lot of it was the same criticisms or unknowns that that he was just bringing up. And I think you handled yourself really well on that interview. And I, one question that I have for you, Matt, is one of the things that you, you talked about was um, wondering, you know, is this team going to take the steps to be tougher this next year? You know, um, we've talked yep. about how they had a finesse identity that the offensive line production, it was bad. Um, we, you know, there were games where we were just lacking tenacity. Um, you know, you talked about on that show a little bit of, you know, how some of that might come from, you know, Coach Prime wasn't a trench player like yourself or anything like that. But what do you think are, are steps that the team can be taking or if you were in position? What would you be doing to instill um, more toughness, more tenacity, better tackling? Look, the 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 fact that Coach Prime played corner, I don't really think that has anything to do with how tough your team can be. Although he wasn't, uh, he's not the best tackling corner of all time. That is a fact. But he is the best player at his position ever. Uh, and maybe the best athlete that's ever played. If Bo Jackson's going to be called the best athlete ever, well, Deion Sanders did it longer and better in both sports. So that's that's my opinion on this. Coach Prime, in my opinion, is top three athletes of all time. That said, um, you want to – the trench is different than skill players. Skill players don't like the trench. Quarterbacks don't like getting hit in the teeth. People that look like football players in the trench that don't like contact become basketball players, bankers, or fans. Um, it's it's a man's game in there. It's never going to change. The only thing we can't do is really high-low you. But other than that, the game is the same as it was when it started, and it's, the, it's going to remain the same moving forward. So in my opinion, when you want to teach toughness, you have to recruit, develop toughness. You have to go find the guys who want to wear black and gold, not just guys who want to be like in the shine. If you just want to be in the shine, <clears throat> well, what happens when the shine wears off? Because when the shine weared off this year and we started getting hit in the fucking mouth every week, we didn't have a response because there's no leader on the offensive or defensive lines that are going that's going to put it into it in practice in the meeting room in the locker room that I like I understand that they fought in practice but at the same time you know it's 
it's when soft people, when soft offensive line and soft defensive line are fighting, it's soft fight. So it, personally, motherfucker calls me soft and it's on like I, that's the one thing that it's that's like calling Michael J. Fox yellow. You call me soft. It's on. So if I if I'm saying that about my university, it's real. And I'm a real big, like, never a uh, losing guy. I'm a learning guy. So yep. I don't really care about losing reps. I care about repeating mistakes. So when we when we show the ability to destroy TCU 45-42, that's not a destruction, but a hell of a game. One yep. of the best games I've ever seen in my life as a CU fan and alum. To to Molly Wap, Nebraska, who you put thirty six points on a defensive football team that's really, really, really good. Yes, <clears throat> you held them to seven. That last fucking uh, touchdown was the last play of the game. So they got beat thirty six to seven. Those commie fucks. And and then you come back against CSU, a game that I was in the locker room all day beforehand. You know, I was in there after we didn't uh-huh. get home till three in the morning. My kid was a recruit. I mean, that was one of the hardest hitting football games that I've ever seen. And they took it on the chin and Shador was the tough guy. He's the one that confronted Blackburn when he cheap shot at Travis Hunter. He's the one that, you know, spit blood and walked back to the line of scrimmage shining through his grill. He's the fucking tough guy. Well, that's fine. Pesaveno and Craig Oaks and the, and or not Craig Oaks, excuse me, Pesaveno and, and Joel Klatt. Craig Oaks is definitely not on that list. Fuck him. But Pesaveno and Joel Klatt were two of the toughest sons of bitches I ever played with in my life at Colorado. You could drive them into the ground over and over and over again, and they would keep getting up. But they damn sure weren't the toughest guys on the team. So when the toughest guy on your fucking team is your quarterback, <laughs> and he, well, let's just be real. Yeah. Did you see Shador? Did you see the offensive line run up to fight Blackburn or Shador get in his face? Should oh, you're at absolutely Arizona right. State, at Arizona State, did he run some dude over and start talking shit? Was his offensive line over there pummeling that fucking guy from Arizona State? Nope, nope that was Shador. So, and then on top of that, they get they get bludgeoned and can't run the football. And then all when if you can't run the football and they know you're passing, holy shit! As a guy who rushed the passer and then had to go play guard and center, when you know it's a pass, it is heyday. And when it when they know it's a pass, it is holy shit! Get rid of the fucking ball. So I think that the toughness question is a, is a, the, I'll ask the question back. Can you build toughness if you aren't trying to build? So I'm not saying that prime's not, I'm asking you the question. Do you think they're trying to build toughness or buy toughness? Cause if you're going to go 80 transfer portal percent, 10% high school and 10% Juco, I would say that, as a guy who helps guys in the transfer portal constantly move, and I placed countless players last year, even like the starting center for Michigan, Drake Nugent, went to Highlands Ranch. He'll be the first center off the board, first team all yeah. Big Ten, went to Stanford. CU said he was too small. Well, he can start at Michigan. So that's a that's a tough ass Colorado kid that that like you can't can't miss on that kind of guy. So if you want to build some some like respect in the trench. Maybe you should go look in your own backyard for some of the monsters that keep going everywhere else. If you keep, if you let Gage Genther leave and Trey Zoom leave and Lincoln Fahapoli leave and you let Achoa leave and you let Stonebreaker leave and you let Drake Nugent leave and you let, you know, I mean, Bear Miller leave and Cole Taylor leave and they, they're all NFL football players. That shit, it, it compounds and it adds up over years. Now, that's not Coach Prime's fault. He just got here. But now that he is here, my question to him, when I was the first goddamn meeting he took after he got hired in his suit upstairs, the question was, how can I help you build this? And since then, I've been helping him. So the conversations that everybody doesn't see behind the scenes, the DMs that we exchange back and forth, the 15 players I sent him yesterday while all you guys think he's mad at me and shit, I think it's fucking hilarious, man. The fact that I can talk shit and mentally affect all you fucking guys the way I do is exactly why I was a good football player. Because I could find the weakling on the fucking offensive line or defensive line and start running my fucking yap. And he's like, oh, my God, I don't like that guy. And the minute he says that, I'm like, I got this motherfucker. So I guess if you want to know how to – I don't know how you teach toughness. I don't know. 
thank God for Dave McChesney and Lynn McChesney because my parents were tough as fuck and are. And you either in the McChesney household, you either got tough or you got got. So it's, I don't know if you can teach toughness, man. I think you need to find it. You need to breed it. It needs to be contagious in the locker room. You need to have motherfuckers that are going to eat glass and fight for each other. And, you know, I only wanted to play there ever. I never, mm -hmm. I, I, I committed as a sophomore in high school. It was my first offer. I had 25 other ones, but as far as I'm concerned, it was my only offer. I didn't go on any other trips. I helped go, Coach Barnett find all, you know, like help them close a bunch of the recruits in our class. Um, I was talking to Sam Wilder last night, who is, you know, godfather to my children, my best friend, who played tackle there, and in the same class, who was the last recruit of the class. And all we talked about for 30 minutes was, can you go to the transfer portal and actually find the tough guys? Or do the tough guys want to stay where they're at already? Because tough guys don't, yeah. I don't like change, dog. I'm not trying to go just, I'm, I'm not trying to like leave a good situation. So I, I, I'm not saying the transfer portal is fool's gold, but I've said this a thousand times. The transfer portal is where players go to get played. The NFL is where real motherfucking football players go to get paid. And that's it. And if anybody thinks that we're just going to walk into the transfer portal and find if 80 new kick-ass football players, but we're going to let Casey Wiley, Austin Johnson, and Kate and uh, Case, uh, Jake Wiley, Austin Johnson, and Casey Roddick leave. Mm -hmm. We can't replace those three. Those are Power Five D1 offensive linemen. They went to Power Five programs: Purdue, UCLA, Florida State. So we're bringing in guys that were playing in the MAC. The defensive linemen in the MAC and the offensive linemen in the MAC are the same fucking guy. The guy, the defensive linemen in the Pac-12 are NFL defensive linemen, dog. This ain't fucking Kent State against Toledo. You got to recruit the right guys. And again, if this offends you, I, I don't give a fuck, dude. Offense means nothing to me. This is football. We're not in the feelings game. We're in the results game. And even Coach Prime knows this. So everybody else needs to shelf their goddamn feelings. If this was Coach Durrell's football team, or Coach Tucker's football team, or Coach Mack's football team, or Coach Embry's football team, or fucking uh, Hawkins' football team, God forbid, <laughs> or, or Coach Barnett, or even... In New Heisel or Coach Mack, everybody would be getting persecuted. Yes. There would not be any of this fake fan love. You're in love with the man. Be in love with the man. He's an incredible man. Incredible. He's a leader. He's inspirational. He 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 demands respect. He gives respect. I always say that the, the thing about Prime that is so good is the way he makes everyone else feel. Being him. When he's the baddest motherfucker in the world and he makes you feel like that, that's a power. So he doesn't play into all this bullshit. And like, <laughs> I personally think that that makes him even more attractive as a coach and as a leader. The fact that he can take criticism. When I put that UCLA film up, it got over 500,000 views and some people liked it and some people hated it. I think I saw maybe one comment with people disagreeing with me. Coach really? Brian texts me on the bus, bro, after the game, eating Popeyes. Like, everybody is in there eating biscuits with honey on them because that's what you get after the games. And he's texting me, hey, thanks for pointing this out. We got to get this fixed. I agree with you. It's unacceptable. Yeah. So I am double I double down when I get affirmation from the big man. I mean, come on, dude. I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. And, I, again, what I love about you, Matt, is that you're going to say what's on your mind, but a lot of people misidentify what I think is that just because you're critical does not, it's the most ridiculous thing to assume that you don't want this thing to be successful, that you don't want this thing to succeed. And it, that's what I'm hoping some people we can realize today. It's like, Matt, isn't this a secret agent just trying to, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, the, like, I'm the biggest fucking spy ever. <laughs> yes, the spy. He's the guy on the inside that's that's just exposing this <laughs> all for his own self. Gain. Get the fuck thing. out of here, dude. Come I, on. I don't man. get it. But, yeah, I don't get it either. Look, I, I love the University of Colorado. It's, uh, it's a special place. You know, last year on the sideline when they were getting – I can't remember who was pummeling us at home. But we, I think it was the Oregon Oregon game, and I was on the sideline, and 
you know, I, I knew what was going to happen. And I'm really good friends with Dan Lanning. So I was talking to him all week and, you know, like when said hi to Christian and blah, 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 blah. Everybody's out there hugging and kissing. And like, I remember walking away from Dan and like walking, he's walking to his sideline all pumped up and I'm walking to Colorado sideline and I'm like, this is going to fucking suck. God damn it. Why, why is this, why do we have to live through this? It's been so long. And I remember walking over and there was a fan that came up and got my attention and I turned around and he goes, why do you keep supporting this? And I looked at him and said, bro, we could lose every game zero, a hundred to fucking zero. We could go oh and 12 for the next 10 years straight. And I'll always think we're going to win. I'll always send players here first. I will always support and I will always care because you can't fucking be a bandwagon bitch. You either love what we do and you either bleed black and gold or you're simply here for the ride. And the ride ends, dog. But the the the, the program, it's going to keep going. It's always going to be there. Nothing and no one is bigger than the logo. So the fact that a fan would even say to me, like, why would you keep supporting? Well, why the fuck are you at the game? You're not an Oregon fan. You're wearing a CU hoodie. Why are you still supporting? Because deep down, you know it's the right thing to do. Because when it gets good, when they go from 1-11 and in a national embarrassment to signing Coach Prime, when it gets mm-hmm. good... I'm not going to be the fucking guy that just comes out of the wood. We're like, hey, I've been here the whole time because I'm the guy that's going to look at you and go, no, you haven't. You ain't been here at all. I'm glad you're here now, but you got some fucking, you got it. Now you either ante up and kick in or shut the fuck up. Now we're still like trying, I, I think, to figure out will this, how this whole grand experiment will go, like you said. Are you trying to buy toughness? Are you trying to teach toughness? We're going to find out. We're going to find out, you know, where this thing goes. Um, But as a coach, as somebody who played in the NFL, as somebody um, who had to grind every day, (coughs) can you help me understand what's going on with special teams? (laughs) Um, You know, this was probably the area that I was most critical of this year, Um, you know, outside of, of course, like the offensive line, but you know, for, from your perspective, uh, like what, what is going on to where it, it was always something that always made me feel like my blood pressure was getting high, man. Every time we had to block for a kick or, you know, uh, kick down field, uh, you know, after a touchdown or something like that. Um, it, and with your coaching eye, were, was there anything that stuck out to you um, for how how we're doing things on special teams, as to why it was such a, it was always something that we had to overcome um, throughout our wins, except the Nebraska game. Uh, I I didn't think the special teams were awful. I thought the punting game was incredible. I mean, the coffin corner punts. I can't I can't even remember the punter's name, but the coffin corner punting this year. I mean, the Arizona game. I think he hit four of them. He hit multiple yeah. throughout the season. The punt the punt game is spot on. That dude's a fucking weapon. Um, the kickers, I'm not going to sit here and say that Mata is a bad kicker or Feely's a bad kicker They're but they're not, they're not good kickers. I mean, they're not Mason Crosby. So when I played there, we had, we had Flores who was awesome. And then, you know, made made a lot of kicks for us to help him win a a big 12 title. And then he left and we had Patrick Brome the next year in 02. And he missed more field goals than he made that year. And we went nine and four and we lost three games by like one score. So with a good kicker that year, we probably are a one loss team. And then we had Mason Crosby. And when Mason was there, bro, I mean, Mason, my senior year at 04, Mason won us damn near every fucking game. So <laughs> I, I think the special teams are really, really important. But again, when you get rid of the depth on your team and replace it with, with what is you think is depth, I think you might struggle in some areas, but it also gives opportunity to players. So, you know, without special teams play this year, I don't think McLean develops into the the player he was at the end of the season. So mm-hmm. it, that's just one example. I think that, you know, Trevor Woods made a name for himself on special teams and then, you know, moved, moved from safety to linebacker and really did a great job there. And, you know, they found him that way. Uh, I played with a lot of walk-ons that made their and cut their teeth on special teams. And before you knew it, they were starting for you on defense and still playing special teams. So I, I think that if the special teams are lacking, put more starters on it um, and take away opportunity from the guys who just want to be on the team because the special teams players don't get as many reps. 
So if it, they're not doing well, replace them with starters and move forward. So I actually thought the special teams were pretty good. That is far from the problem, in my opinion. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned Trevor <laughs> Woods, guy who switched positions midseason. Um, you know, kind of another guy that I had some expectations for, was hoping to see more of, was Savelle Smalls this year, you know, coming over from Washington, played both edge and tight end in high school. Um, similar to Trevor Woods, do you foresee maybe a, a position change uh, for anybody on this roster like Savelle Smalls or, or, or anybody else? We are in need of some tight ends right now. Uh, I mean, maybe. I, look, I, I would be doing a couple of things. Depending on who the offensive coordinator is going to be and who the offensive line coach is going to be and all that shit, I would be moving the worst linebacker that we have to fullback or two of them to fullback and putting them in 40 numbers and teaching them how to run through someone's fucking chest at eight yards for about eight months straight. And then I would find maybe the worst offensive lineman we have on scholarship and maybe one of the worst defensive linemen we have on scholarship and move them both to tight end and never throw them the fucking ball, but teach them how to play 12 personnel tight end heavy scissor alignment and tray tight end tray block and really double team. That it's teachable. I know this because I played defense my whole fucking life. And then, oh, does this make me a traitor too? Bill Callahan was my coach in the league. <laughs> the spooky Nebraska coach. That's where I became a double agent. And he's the one that that taught me everything I know on the offensive line, the smartest offensive line coach I've ever been around with the Jets. So I know you can teach it. I know you can rep it. And I know it works. So if it's taught correctly and developed correctly, you give me a fucking trench animal that's built correctly with the right mindset. I will teach him how to play offensive line and be tough. I'll teach him how to read a key in the defensive line and be tough and, and hold their gap and go inside and moves and things of that nature. But when you're talking about two way players, there needs to be some position changes. The coaches have got to figure that out. I don't know all the personnel, you know, top mm -hmm. to bottom on who they're bringing in and who they're losing. But I'll tell you this. As a guy who played both ways and considers himself a concrete Charlie as I started games on offense and defense in the NFL, I never played both in the same game. I never played right. both in the same game in college. Like, very rarely did that happen. Travis Hunter is the baddest fucking man alive. That is the best college football player in the country, hands down. And he's still a baby. He doesn't know shit from Shinola, bro. Like, he's just out there playing on pure talent. He's got an entire offseason to be tootled under Coach Prime to get bigger, stronger, faster, dare I say. And I think next year, I think tra if Travis Hunter's healthy next year, I don't think he leaves the field ever. I think he's the first pick in the draft consensus. Yep. I don't think that anybody can not take him number one. He's a generational talent. And then he's going to have to make a decision in the NFL – and the National Football League is going to have to make a decision because you're not you're not getting a first round corner, you're not getting a first round receiver, you're getting both. If you take him with the number one pick, you're getting a first round receiver and a first round corner in the same draft. I don't know if he can do that both in the NFL at the consistency with the how hardcore that game is. Well, mm -hmm. it's not as hardcore as it used to be, but at the, it's still <laughs> it's still pretty fucking violent. So. I, I don't know. That That's a tough question. That's another mindset question. There's not a whole lot of offensive linemen that can switch positions. There's a lot of defensive linemen that if your guards are soft like ours were this year, I mean the softest pair of guards I've ever seen in my life, then maybe you need to move a defensive lineman that's a tough son of a bitch to guard and just show them how to do it. But then again, our defensive line was equally as soft as our offensive line. So you're, you're exchanging a, a pillow for a pillow, bro. I don't really know the answer to that one. Well, in regards to the 12 personnel, I think a lot of us were expecting to see more of that this year, looking back at Sean Lewis's offense, whatnot. Um, is there is there anybody that comes to mind in, in terms of like who you'd want to see run this offense? Because I would imagine if we're running a little bit more pro style, maybe this team's a little bit more tough. Um, I, I don't know who the offensive coordinator is going to be. It might end up being Schum Schumer, Shammer, whatever his name is. Shermer, but I, yeah. Man, Shermer, when he was with the Broncos, it was – I don't think I, – I don't I don't know if in a recruiting world if that guy's going to necessarily like knock people's socks off. I don't know. That's Coach Prime's call and the offensive coordinator. The, the, the offensive line coach, I mean, Chris Kapovich just got let go of Michigan State. He's one of Mel Tucker's guys. That's a bad man. He's a great coach. 
a uh, very, very smart dude who develops the shit out of his guys. Michigan State obviously had a bad year because of everything that happened there. He's on the market. There's a lot of really good coaches out there, but again, they have to be empowered. You have to be empowered as a coach and say, like, I don't know how much power Coach O'Boyle had to stand up in the meeting room and go, we need to put 21 personnel on the field and mash these fucking people's face down. I don't even know if he would say it. Like, there's, there. I'm not saying this is Coach OB. He's still the offensive line coach there, and I think he's a good one. Um, but when you are worried about, like, I said this on DNVR several times, when things start going bad, people start thinking about Cancun and their next job. Point in case, Coach Lewis is already at San Diego State. Right. So, I when you're in that position and you can read the writing on the wall, are you really going to fight for change and be the guy, the guy in the room when they call and go, tell me about it. And he goes, well, when things were hard, he got pretty aggressive. Or are you going to be the guy that was like, yeah, he didn't, he didn't want to rock the boat and he was a good coach and just didn't work out. So in, in that regard, you're probably not going to get a lot of pushback, but um, I would say coach Kaplovic would be number one on my list. <clears throat> Who was the offensive line coach for the Broncos? When Vic Fangio was here? Um, Munchak. Munchak. That's the dude right there. Koningsberg yeah. brought him up on uh, Twitter today. Mike Munchak lives here. He's in Denver. He got Garrett Bowles right, bro. Listen. <laughs> listen to what I'm saying. This dude got Garrett Bowles right, dog. This dude got Garrett Bowles right, dog. I mean, shit. Let's just be fucking real. Open up the back up the Brinks truck and just be like, how much fucking money you want? Just let it fall out. Like, <laughs> the duck. This guy got Garrett Bowles right, homie. Garrett Bowles is playing at a Pro Bowl level because of this dude. Hire him and the offensive line. <laughs> oh man, well said, well said. Well, um, I, I want to be conscientious of uh, uh, of your time, Matt McChesney. Again, thank you so much. Um, for coming on it really means a lot i think the chat you guys were freaking fire I is it, is it, it does anybody have anything negative to say you guys got to know that when you come at me and like you have to understand something about me <laughs> when people talk shit to me i like it 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 turns me on dog like it makes me fucking it, it, it like you, you when normal dudes, some of these comments <laughs> yeah but I, any of them i don't give a fuck i haven't had one hard question this whole time everybody was coming at me the other day come at me motherfuckers what all right. Well, um, it, it's still the s same stuff that people saying. Like, um, I, but I, I don't read comments, dog. I don't. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you what they. Here say we go. Here. This one. He will not be a coach at CU, bro. I've been talking spicy for uh, for yeah. a while. Prime I'm glad you brought this up. I, I don't. I don't want to be the coach at CU. I answer the question. When people bring it up on social media, I don't say, "No, I don't want to do that." I I know I could do it at an extremely high level, but I don't want to do it. I'm not walking away from six zero Academy and equipment and the shows and everything else I've built. I'm a small business owner. Do you understand the freedom of that? And then on top of it, I can help them just by consulting outside. When Koningsberg asked me on DNVR blatantly, do you want to be the coach there? Fuck yeah, that would be dope. If coach prime was like, Hey, you want to be the coach here? And I, and then I could sit down and talk to him and be like, can we do this, 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 and this, and can we bring in these guys? And, are you going to empower me? That's another question. But you're right. I'm not the offensive line coach there. Uh, and I'm not trying to actively get the job. I haven't submitted my resume or anything. Uh, and I'm the spiciest motherfucker alive, homie. Come at me. But you block people. I blo I love the block button, dog. I'm an offensive lineman. Of course they do. I block the fuck out of everyone. Um, let's see here. But you block um, people. Oh, oh this one. <laughs> this you. one. Here we go. People make me laugh, Doug. <laughs> this dude was a nobody. Uh, so was Colorado until Prime came. That's that's true. I was an extremely <laughs> average player. I went undrafted. I had to change positions. I got cut 14 times. Uh, but I do have my full pension. Uh, and when I was at Colorado, we won a lot of big football games and conference titles and, you know, beat number one teams in the country. And that that's fine. Colorado has been really shitty for a long time with the exception of one year. Uh, I personally think that coach McIntyre, if he could have found a way to win one, two more games and have two, six and six teams that went to bowl games, he probably would still be the coach here. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But that that yeah. that three year so. stretch of five and seven, five and seven, five and seven, especially the last year where they started five and zero, oh, bro, and then they lost to Oregon, or they I don't know, lost yeah. to SD, and then they came back and Oregon State beat them on the comeback. The Oregon State comeback was like one of the fucking hardest moments of my life as a Buffalo. Alum. Just just the knife going in your chest, like saving Private Ryan. Just like no, 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 and he's just sliding it in all slow. So that that should suck. But look, he's the 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 dude in the comments is right. Colorado's been re- irrelevant. I'm gonna say this again. Um, I'm 42 years old, and 2004 was my senior year, and I was the last senior captain at CU to hold a bowl game trophy. So we haven't won a bowl game in 20 years. So he's right. It's irrelevant. And yeah. I ain't shit. I'm just some grunt that does things. So you are correct, mm-hmm. bro. But I'll tell you this. We're all equal. But we, we ain't the fucking same. So remember that. With um, There was another comment. I'm trying to pull it up here. But I can't find it. But anyways, they're just saying, Matt's just on here to promote his guys. Well, what what guy did I promote? I talked about Drake Nugent as an example. Okay. Yeah. You want me to promote my guys? My guys are all over the NFL and starting all over college football. If the playoff ends up Georgia, I think it'll end up Georgia, Michigan, Washington, or Oregon, and Florida State. Okay? Well, Casey Roddick starts for Florida State. He's one of my guys. And Roger Rosengarten and Zach Henning are on Washington's offensive line. They're two of my guys. And Drake Nugent and Connor Jones and Gentry and Reese Atterbury are all at Michigan. There's four of my guys. And so, yeah, you're fucking right. I'm going to talk about my guys. I know that the guys that are in the transfer portal this year potentially or that are going to go in could help in Boulder. So that's why I'm sending them to Coach Prime. I'm sorry that you're too much of a bitch to promote yourself, but I'm in the small business community. So if I don't go out and promote myself and what we do, no one will. So, uh and as an athlete, if you're not your biggest fan, then you will have none. So, man, <laughs> don't confuse my passion and fury for this university and the game of football for anything but that. But also don't come at me like you know. Like it, when Hobbytown motherfuckers come at me, you better know what you're talking about or I will eviscerate your ass. So I respect the shit out of the fact that you even did this, bro. Like it, it I, I like your show and you should keep doing it and – if I give you any advice, it's lean into it and talk to people you don't like. Anybody that you got, look, if you don't like the fact that I talked to Jason Whitlock, you're going to hate the fact that I'm going to talk to him again. Like, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Wait, if he asks me to come back on one day, I'm going to go back on. And the next time you go back on, it'll be, I'll, I'll know the questions he's going to ask me and shit because I had no idea what he was going to ask. So it, it's, look, man, quit being scared of the opposition and start going eye to eye with these motherfuckers, and then you'll be equal with them. That's the problem in Boulder. When they, when we, when when we stare at a coward, that coward looks at the ground. But when we stare across and we are met by a warrior, we look at the ground. And we can't have that anymore. And I'll end on this. Everybody remember this: the pride and tradition of the Colorado Buffaloes will never be entrusted to the timid or the motherfucking weak. The timid or the weak cannot come here. Stay away. The timid and the weak can't be supportive. The timid and the weak don't have a voice. The timid and the weak don't have a vote. The timid and the weak get to watch the fucking warrior do it. So we need to find warriors that actually want to do it and not just guys that want to be in the shine, like I said. So great show, bro. Well said. Mic drop. Everybody, get the emojis in the chat. Give a warm uh, another thank you to Coach Matt McChesney for coming on here. It means a lot. I appreciate you. One last question. If yes, you sir. do end up having time to get a NCAA copy next summer, will you play me in a football game? I thought it was going to come back out this year. What happened? It got delayed. The logistics, huh? Yeah, fucking corporations. Absolutely, dog. NCAA okay. football is that shit. That was the best game in the fucking world, dog. At hand, hand, Madden, Madden's okay. I, I, I mean, Madden's kind of the same game every year, and I guess the NCAA was too. But it, it, I don't know. It just wasn't that 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 game. There's nothing better than sitting down with your boys and you know dubbing someone to twenty one and looking at them and go get off the fucking stick. So now uh, you know my my kids love playing the games too, and some dads will let their kids win, and I ain't one of those. So when we get NCAA in this house, I'm gonna whip that ass.
Absolutely. <laughs> well, let's do it. Awesome. Thanks again so much. Uh, means a yeah, lot. Y'all yeah. be sure hit up that uh, 5430 Foundation. Thank you for the super yes. chat. They're the going there. And this is the other thing. Hey, yeah. all the fucking rappers and hip hop stars and basketball players and celebrities and the fucking rock and all these other dudes. Yo, contribute to the fucking fun, homie. And let's buy some players. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Buffs Nation. Thanks again for joining me for this. I'll see you guys again later this evening. And as always, Sco Buffs. Peace.